thanks. Hi, everyone. Um, so I'm going to tell you about this. Uh, it's a plastic bottle. Uh, and with my co-founder, Rodrigo, we started to look at this, thinking that it's very convenient, but uh, we don't realize how much um, energy and resources and waste we create when we use these for, for drinking. Uh, for example, we realized that a plastic bottle like this, it takes 700 years to decompose. Um, to make a one liter bottle, you need seven liters of water in the manufacturing process and half a liter of crude oil. So that's quite a lot. Um, and even if we recycle some of them, they end up being downcycled to other products that have less value. So it really felt like, I mean, water is something very essential, but we use very, very like uh, energy intensive and precious materials for just drinking on the go. The problem with that is also that we are more and more drinking these plastic bottles and the trend is just crazy. Uh, it's a product that didn't exist 40 years ago. The whole market has been completely created out of like thin air. Uh, the growth is about 10% per year um, and with like a lot of uh, emerging countries who are uh, rapidly uh, reaching the same kind of like level of consumption that we have in the US or in Europe. It's really a, a global problem. So uh, we came up with this. Um, so it's a membrane that encapsulates water. Uh, it's completely natural. It's made of seaweed. Um, it's biodegradable, and it's even edible. And I think that Rodrigo has a few. So this one, yeah. <laughs> so we think that uh, we could make different sizes for different kind of applications, but the idea is that we could have an, an alternative to plastic bottles that is completely natural, biodegradable, and even edible. Um, so what we did is we tried to like, like copy what nature does um, using membranes. Membranes are a very efficient way to use materials because all of the material works in traction and in compression. Uh, so from egg yolks to fruits to our cells, nature uses membranes everywhere. And um, the material that we decided to use is seaweed. And seaweed is a really wonderful material. It's kind of like underused for some reason. Like we use a lot of wood but we don't use the wood of the sea. Like it's, it's growing everywhere on every coastline. Uh, some of the seaweed that we use, it grows three meters per day. So that's how renewable it is. Uh, it's cheap. It, you don't have to like compete with farmland. You don't have to put fertilizer. It's kind of like a, a really cool material. And the, the kind of like science behind to create these membranes, we actually didn't come up with that. It was already like, existing. So I don't know if you know this. This is fake caviar. It was invented in the 60s for like, uh, like making yeah, like cheap uh, caviar uh, looking kind of like small fish flavored uh, beads. And it's the same material. It's, it's uh, an extract from seaweed called alginate that you combine with calcium. That's like a natural element. And it just like polymerize and it creates this kind of like same material as seaweed. And uh, looking at this and starting to uh, like prototype with this, we realized that this could be used as a packaging material, not just for food, but also just for like, yeah, packaging things that, like, that we use all the time. Um, so we went from the lab to the street, showing it to people, trying to get some insights on what people think. And um, obviously there's some challenges. Like this is very convenient. There is a cap on it, so you can just like close it. But trying to work our, our way around these kind of like uh, problems, we look back at nature and nature has the same kind of problem. There's no cap on fruits. Uh, but looking at how like, for example, in, on an orange, you've got lots of small sip size containers in a bigger skin and you can just like take the skin off and like eat them one by one. So that's kind of what we try to recreate. So uh, this one, for example, it's a, it's a bigger uh, one that has five of these containers inside. So you could just have one as you go. Uh, we've created like labels and like all sorts of things uh, for making it more um, appealing for people. And uh, at the beginning, when we started this project, it was kind of a student pro student project that we didn't think we would like push forward. So we just shared all our experiments online with Creative Commons. We explained to people how to make this. And the answer was incredible. Like 
like people started to make this. Uh, YouTube is full of videos of people replicating these kind of like uh, spheres. Uh, this is this video. I think it's like it's got 20 million views. This is one of the major shows in Japan. Uh, this one is in Germany. So all around the world, people started to like experiment with this and like do some variations on the on the recipe. And it was kind of just like a big global innovation lab where people tried things. And we learned so much from this. Uh, we got in touch with a lot of people as well, a lot of companies, and that was kind of a really good starting point for us because it showed us that people were really excited about this. They were really excited about having an alternative to plastic bottles, and like, the, like a lot of people feel guilty about like the, the amount of material that we use. So we felt that we had to like take this a bit further than just sharing like the beginning of a recipe online. And so we created a, a, a company, and uh, we are based in London. We've we've started to like work with a lot of big beverage companies. We what we want to do is not just create our own like water brand and like distribute this on our own, but like the idea is that we will provide this technology for lots of different beverage uh, companies that can use our our material. Um, and uh, this is so we're based in London uh, at Imperial College. Uh, this is some of the some of the interns uh, working on some of the improvements. So you can see that we can make different thickness, so some can be quite resistant for transport. Uh, we can also make double layers, so like for hygiene reasons, you can just like peel off one of the layers that has been in contact with your bag or your pocket or anything. Um, and it's just like a very like flexible material that you can use in lots of different ways. Uh, in parallel, we've been working on like how to make this at scale, so we are working on a machine that can produce these at a fast pace, um, which, which is very important as well. Um, and so working with these companies, we realized that uh, they, there is an interest, but plastic has created such a high standard, like everything has to be like, uh, on the, like able to stay on the shelf for like five years. It's completely unnecessary, the, the kind of like requirements that are re like created by these companies. Um, and we felt that we, I mean, we are at the beginning of, the, of, of this journey. Uh, our material has like a relatively short shelf life. We're working on this. But we thought that we have something that can already have an impact, that is like already good enough for certain applications. So maybe not for like sitting on the shelf of uh, Walmart for three years, but like we can start somewhere. So looking at fruits, I mean like fruits, they have a short shelf life, but we've, we found a way to just like make it work at scale. Um, so these are some examples of uh, like artificial fruits. So this is a bit like a, a lychee where you have one dose of water that is covered with a, with a skin. Um, and I think after that there's like a lemon. So this one has five of these like pods. Um, and we thought that this could be really good for um, places where a lot, of, um, a lot of plastic consumption happens like in a very short time. Uh, and where it's completely necess unnecessary to have such a complex packaging. So things like marathons, festivals, uh, outdoor events, where tons of plastic is used just one day, it's, complete, it's super easy to predict that there is going to be this kind of consumption. Um, and yeah, like we are all conscious that there is a lot of trash. People are just like looking for solutions. You can use reusable containers, but you have to carry them around, so it's not very convenient. You want something that you can dispose of. Um, so what we come up, we came up with is uh, we, we call it the water truck. So it's a bit like a food truck uh, where we can put our machine and we can just plug on a tap water and we can produce on demand with local tap water with our like seaweed packaging. And we can just sell it uh, like right from the event and just drive around, go from one event to another. Um, so this is something we're working on at the moment. We're raising the funding to try to like put this together, but a lot, like 90% like of it is completely de-risked. So it, it looks like it's something that ca can happen right now. Um, and what's interesting is that we can really provide something that has, that has a, a really the big impact. So, 90% cost, 90% uh, uh, of the CO2 re uh, like reduced in comparison to plastic bottles. Uh, we can produce it as a, at the same price as plastic, so it, there is no increase in price for people, and uh, no waste. So, like we've talked with some festivals, and they're telling us how, like dealing with all the waste after a festival is a huge pain, and it's costing a lot of money. So, we have something that is just like not creating any waste. Um, so this is OHO. If you've got a few questions, I'm happy to answer.
Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Questions? Have you thought about the potential for water balloon fights? Yes, uh, sure. I'm just kidding. Um, uh, what kind of resistance have you met when talking to companies like Nestle or um, large water bottle production um, companies? Have you met mostly resistance or some acceptance? I think, I mean, like, what's really hard uh, with, with large companies is the kind of, like, decision cycles. So uh, we, we could move really fast with this, uh, but uh, in these companies, like, Coming with such a disruptive uh, kind of innovation, it's really hard to convince the right people, and like there is a lot of validation that needs to happen. So we felt that we were a bit stuck if we were like, I mean, like if we wanted to include them early on on the development with like with us as we are figuring out the solutions. So it feels like we're gonna. I mean, like, we're gonna have a much easier relationship once we have something that is just like plug and play, and they can just order it, uh, which is a, a pity because we think that, I mean, like, they know their markets, they have amazing insights. It, like, there is, yeah, there is, like, it's a big fish, small fish, it's really hard to communicate. Um, but I think what's really interesting is that, um, ov obviously, some companies are just talking with us because they are interested to check out the technology, but some of them, they come with, like, real feedback from their consumers that there is a like a request from the, con the consumers to have an alternative to plastic. And that's really interesting because it means that the market is like starting to look like it's ready to change. Um, hi, thank you. Hi. That's, uh, I love these water pods, <laughs> I think they're so Cool. Um, do you think that this could ultimately help some of the problems, like water shortage problems, some of the ones mentioned by um, like Charity Water and stuff like that? Sure. And like, right now, we are conscious that uh, the shelf life is quite limited. So uh, for applications that require like uh, a few days or a few weeks of, uh, of, of shelf life, we have something that works right now. But the way we see like, what we do is like, we, we do a lot of research on the material and we think that eventually we're going to have something that is like maybe as good as this. Like if we if we can have something that is uh, providing the same kind of performances, uh, that would be that would be an ideal material. Because um, and so like plastic took 80 years to become that good. Like when they invented the first formulations of plastic after like the Second World War, no one would have ever thought that we would put all our food and our beverage in plastic. So it takes a lot of time and we are conscious of this so it, that's why we need to find like both the like people who believe that this is the technology for the long future and need to invest uh, for like the long shot and at the same time focus on these applications that we can have right now and have an impact right now Are there any other questions for Pierre Yeah, regarding funding, what yeah. has been your best avenues uh, regarding um, just finding finding ways to get money? Who are the right audiences you feel like you're you're speaking to? Who have been the most challenges? Yeah. Um, so uh, until now, we've been really like uh, uh, fortunate to get uh, some money from European Union, uh, who was helping us like to be, like bootstrap the startup till now. Um, and at the moment, like what we're trying to do is uh, like build something that is that has like a, an environmental impact, but that's for profit because that's the best way to make it scalable. So ideally, we would love to have a mix of philanthropies and and uh, private investment, impact investors, because we think that that mix gives a really good flavor to like what the company is about. Um, so that's what we're exploring at the moment. We yeah, have time for one last question if there are any more. Great. Well, thank you so much. Thanks. So much.